Why do mannequins have nipples? People have nipples. You wanna, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to Curious Business. I'm your host, Alan Sheen Lewis. Each episode, I take you behind the scenes of some of the most unique and successful businesses out there. Now, the Bay Area is home to a lot of innovative startups. You know, AI businesses, biotech, biodome, and other buzzwords. And then there's Mannequin Madness. Mannequin Madness is an unexpectedly successful recycling business that's keeping 400,000 pounds of mannequins out of landfills each year. So come along with me as I meet Judy, the queen of mannequins. I'm good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have you ever been in a place like this? No. Uh, what is this place? It's a scene from the Twilight Zone. Mannequin Madness is the only mannequin recycling company in the Bay Area and the largest in the United States. So who buys and rents your mannequins? So I get everybody from maybe the struggling fashion student to I get high-end stores who are looking to save money by buying a used mannequin instead of a new one. Did you work in fashion before or are you just doing this for the love of the business? I was going to get a mannequin for an art project and I discovered that someone ran the only mannequin rental company in town and was leaving the state found him on Craigslist, decided to buy all 50 of his mannequins, thinking it was gonna be a side hustle, and it is now mushroomed to something completely different. Mannequins are made out of materials that don't biodegrade. Fiberglass, styrofoam, metal, and so there's both the environmental aspect of throwing something like this in the trash, as well as the cost of getting a dumpster to put something so large in. It's cool, so you're looking out for the environment. When people are coming in here to purchase, are you like, well, what are you using it for? Or are you just like, I don't need to know? You know, we fuel people's imagination here, and that's what I love. Most people come in here, they are happy because they found something they didn't know that they could find. They usually have some creative need that we're helping them to fulfill. People need a way to have a lot more fun, and mannequins are way to help with that. So I see a lot of mannequins on the front area here, but how many mannequins do you have in total? Oh my God, more than we can keep count of. We have our showroom area here. Then let me show you some of the other items we have in the back. Okay, cool. Does it look like Christian Slater? A little bit. So no one's coming in here and be like, I want to get in the HOV lane. I just need something real quick. You know, we don't support that, but we're happy to sell it to them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Jay-Z of mannequins. How's it going? <laughs> Come on, Alan. I've got something special to show you in my office here. You asked about a special mannequin that I have, and I have this one here. Not only is it special because you don't find that many child-sized mannequins, especially African-American ones, but she is wearing my Girl Scout uniform that I had when I was a Girl Scout, which is a few years ago. That's so adorable. And, and do you remember all the badges, what they're for? And there's actually one on there with sewing. Can you believe that I'm doing mannequins? Yeah. <laughs> and then the other torso there is my dad's uh, merit badge. He was an Eagle Scout. So just showing that mannequins can be used to display something that's really sentimental or a treasure to you, something you can no longer wear, but you still want to be able to have those fond memories. So uh, Judy just got an order in, and she asked me if I can give her a hand. Oh, oh hi. Was that Judy? I'll be right there. <laughs> Are you following me? So I've got an order we need to fill today. Would you mind grabbing these items off of the floor and bring them back here for our packing department? Certainly, will do. All right, looking for one butt. One butt. Where could the butts be? Ah, butts. Okay. All right, I got two options here. Which one do I want? Which butt is me? I feel like this one's saying, hi, hello, and this one's saying, like, please take me. All right, let's get my height on this one. Oh! There it is, so I got my butt. Moving on to the next task. Let's see what we got here. Oh, dress mannequin, that's on the list. You're coming with me, miss, thank you. Ah, there it is. Here you go, you're gonna come with me, if you will. I think I got everything. I had to bring it all there without it falling. All right. So I found them. So we've got butt, baby, dress for them. Have any idea why one customer would want to have such diverse items in their store? This all just feels like Cisco's theme, or Drew Hill kind of thing going on here. 
Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of Cisco, the technology company, but okay. But Cisco is futuristic. I will agree to that. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So you're clearly passionate about mannequins. Like, like, take me back before the mannequins. Like, what was Judy doing before that, like pre-mannequins? Well, I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur, that's for sure, and certainly not selling mannequins. But what made me take the bigger leap was after 9-11 happened and I lost my job. I realized that was the time I wanted to live with more, more passion and more joy and be less fearful, even though this was a very fearful time. So that's what allowed me to take this from doing a little hobby on the side hmm. to make it go much further and do it full time. So you lost your job, and then you're going to take a chance on this business. But like, what are some of the, the challenges that you had to face going forward? Well, first of all, I was just taking myself seriously, because when you're in a niche industry like this, sometimes it's hard being one of the first ones, and everyone is thinking, what are you doing? You normally used to work much more conservative type of jobs, and now here you are doing something with mannequins. So it's sort of like you know the disbelief of sometimes the closest people around you who really feel the best for you, but they're discouraging at the same time. I think that was the hardest part. What started as a random art project for Judy has grown into a million dollar business. Clearly, she's found something that makes her happy. What am I doing with my life? Why am I holding this baby? Do you think she'll notice I'm standing here? Ah, I fooled you, didn't I? Not a, not a mannequin. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching Curious Business. I'm Alan Shane Lewis. Each episode, I spend the day with an owner of an unusual business. If you want to see me visit a mermaid school or get to the bottom of why an increasing amount of dogs are wearing goggles, subscribe for more. See you folks in the next one.